On this episode, I will teach you how to export a video with consistent sound levels in DaVinci Resolve to the recommended target level of negative 14 LUFs for uploading to YouTube. The purpose of this video is to eliminate publishing quiet and lifeless audio in five easy steps. If you're watching this video again, those five steps are gain staging, leveling, compression, limiting, and normalization. I will also suggest some free tools you can use during this process. Although this video is a complete solution, there is a series of follow-up videos that completes the larger picture of the concepts in this video. I strongly suggest watching them if you like knowing how things work and are interested in learning advanced techniques used by mixing and mastering engineers. Let's get started. Step 1. Gain stage and balance your mix. I made a video on audio automation that guides you on how to do this. A link will appear in this window. Gain staging means that all your track audio levels are not in the red and the green meter is dancing between negative 18 dB and negative 12 dB, with peaks no higher than negative 6 dB on your master bus at any point. If you have a lot of tracks, you may find that your individual tracks may need to be lowered to leave the recommended headroom on your master bus. If nothing else, just make sure nothing is ever in the red at any moment during the mixing process. Having a healthy audio signal on each track is the first step to eliminate quiet videos. As I said before, when your audio is too quiet, it can make your video production seem lifeless and unprofessional. So the goal when gain staging is just make sure your audio levels are within the range I advised. After gain staging, what we want to do is something called gain writing or audio leveling. Again, refer to my other video on automating audio. What we aim to do is eliminate peaks in our audio, thus reducing dynamic range because it can negatively impact a listener's experience when the content suddenly becomes extremely loud or extremely quiet. Also, dynamic range can contribute to quiet parts in your audio because after the audio is normalized, which happens at a later stage, the quietest parts still remain quiet relative to the loudest, even though the overall volume will be raised or lowered to achieve the appropriate target level. So find the peaks in your audio and lower them, or if possible, re-record the audio or replace it. You can save time leveling your audio by using Resolve's Dialog Leveler located in the Audio tab in the Inspector window on the Edit page. It works well to level out louder sounds, but I find taking out the peaks manually produces the best results. Step 3. Audio Compression After the audio is relatively level, we can further polish the audio levels with a compressor. A compressor is a plug-in that works like a super-fast volume control that reduces the dynamic range by attenuating the volume of louder sections, ensuring an overall even volume. While Resolve has a native compressor, a great free alternative, if you want something with more features, is Tokyo Don Records' TDR Kotelnikov. This is an excellent compressor that serves most everyone's needs. Not only does the compressor control dynamics, it can glue the track together if you have more than several tracks summed. Gluing the mix together means you're leveling the micro peaks through the audio spectrum that belong to different components that make up the final sound and leveling them so their dynamics don't differ, which gives the summed sound a more organic cohesiveness as if all the sounds were recorded in the same room or space. This answer is subjective and can differ from one mastering engineer to another but essentially every interpretation defines the same effect. This is important. I strongly suggest using a compression ratio of no more than two to one for dialogue. This will produce a more transparent result to avoid the pumping effect. If your audio is mostly music, then use the recommended ratio according to your genre of music. You can search this if you're not sure. Now it's completely possible your audio doesn't even need compression. As a rule of thumb, just don't compress your audio too aggressively and you'll be fine. Okay, now we're ready to get our track ready for prime time by bringing up the audio levels with a limiter, which is our next step. Resolve has a limiter. You can use this. There are free limiters you can download, but for now, the one in Resolve is good enough. I'm not going to teach you how to use one in this video, but make sure you set the ceiling to negative 1 dB. But only set this if you are not going to use Resolve's normalization. If you are going to use Resolve's normalization, there is no need to set it as the normalization process already sets the ceiling for you. 
Whether you or Resolve sets this ceiling, it is for the following reason. This protects your audio from distorting during YouTube's re-encoding process when you upload your video. After applying the limiter and setting the ceiling, you'll want to use Resolve's LUFS meter on the top right of the Fairlight tab. Click on the three dots and select Absolute Scale. Hit Reset and then Start. Then play your entire audio adjusting your limiter so the short-term value is near negative 14 LUFS or slightly louder. As you raise the gain on the limiter, you'll want the integrated level to be equal to or greater than negative 14 LUFS, like between negative 13.8 to negative 13.6 LUFS. From experience, you want to be just a little over because we're going to use Resolve's loudness normalization. Testing I've done reveals that if you limit to louder than negative 14 LUFS and set the ceiling to negative 1 dB, only this combination will work. Resolve will normalize to exactly negative 14 LUFS. However, if you limit to a little quieter than negative 14 LUFS, like negative 14.8 or quieter, whether or not you set a ceiling, Resolve's loudness normalizer will normalize a little quieter than negative 14 LUFS. I tested this many times with the same results. For better control and visual feedback of your audio, I suggest using the free Ulean loudness meter. It will track your levels graphically. That plugin goes after your limiter. All it does is monitors your loudness. I highly recommend it. Step 5 Normalize. We're at the last stage. Go to the Deliver tab, click on Audio Settings, then expand Audio Normalization, and check Normalize Audio. In the active drop down list, scroll and select YouTube. Alternatively, you can choose the YouTube preset from the top scrolling menu and select YouTube. Then check the box labeled Normalize Audio if all your other settings are good. Click Add to Render Queue and Render. Then you can upload to YouTube. So let's recap. Step 1 Gain Stage. Step 2 Leveling. Step 3 Compression. Step 4 Limiting and step five, normalize, then render. Make sure to watch the follow-up videos where I explain intrinsic details of the concepts in this video, as well as advanced and creative techniques used by mixing and mastering engineers. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.